Toy Spot, we are having a look at the Hasbro Marvel Legends Infinite Series Marvel's Rhino Build-A-Figure Wave. We're looking at Heroes for Hire Misty Knight. Yes, it will not say Misty Knight on the front. Again, I don't, I don't know why. But Misty Knight does come with the other torso, as that's the reason why we're going to be having a look at her next. Technically, we don't need her torso. We already had the torso for Rhino from White Tiger. But we want to look at this figure next because she does share the same uh, figure piece. Side of the package features Misty Knight. The other side also does not. It features Ghost Rider. But on the back, the two figures from the Heroes for Hire. There's Marvel's Misty Knight and Ghost Rider. Read-up says, investigating evil and protecting the city, these heroes give evil no place to hide. Other figures down below, however, there's the Scarlet Spider, the Superior Venom, Heroes for Hire, Misty Knight, Marvel's White Tiger, Savage Force. Of course, that is, um, of course, I'm now drawing an absolute blank. I don't know why. Craven, Craven the Hunter, thank you. And Heroes for Hire, Ghost Rider, Savage Force, Chameleon. To check out more from the folks over at Hasbro, go to www.hasbro.com forward slash Spider-Man. Spot's going to take a break, going to get this opened up, and when we come back, we're going to get a better look at the Heroes for Hire Misty Knight. Don't go anywhere, guys. There's more anyway. Stay tuned. Spot ultimately struggled trying to keep Misty Knight to stand, so ultimately I'm just kind of going to have her lie down for a second until we completed our looks at the torso piece. It is, in fact, yes, the same torso piece that we got ourselves with White Tiger. Nothing new, nothing all that interesting, nothing different really, I should say. It is an interesting enough torso, but again, if you're going to get two of the exact same piece, I wish uh, Hasbro would go the extra mile and uh, give us some sort of differences in the torso, maybe uh, between the two. I don't know, maybe like a gash or something, something just to indicate that, yes, this is different than the other one that we looked at. Needless to say, let's put that to the side. We're no really anywhere closer to completing Rhino just yet, but we'll put him to the side. Let's have a look at Misty Knight. Misty Knight is a good example of just because you don't know the character that the figure is based on does not mean that you cannot love this figure. I compare that to, let's reach off camera to the first figure that we had a look at was White Tiger. This is an example of a character that Spot knows absolutely nothing about and found, therefore, that the figure was a little on the drab side. However, Misty Knight, same thing. I don't know too much when it comes to Misty Knight, but I gotta say, she's a fantastic looking figure. There's just a lot of personality going on with this figure piece. Moving White Tiger out of the way, we've, of course, already had the review look at her. If you haven't seen the review, go back, check it out, maybe after this video. Grab yourself a sandwich first. Um, yeah, I really love this figure. There's a lot going on with this, uh, with Misty Knight here. First things first, let's open up her holster. She does come with a gold gun. A little bent. That's all right, I can just warp it, put it back into place, put a little hot water treatment, go in there, bend it back. Uh, it does fit into her one hand, only one hand, sadly. We just wedge that in between her fingers like so. She even has a trigger finger, which again has to just be corrected. And there we go. That's actually might be how I display Misty Knight. Just gun up, ready to dish out some sass. But again, I really like this piece. Um, her coloring is, it's not quite red. The outfit, I shouldn't say, is not quite red. It's almost... It's got a little bit of fleck going in there, and that's actually more likely due to the way the plastic was created. But it, the coloring is almost more a ketchup red than a dark red. It's almost got more of an orangey red going on to it. And I like that. I think that's nice. Her feet, sadly, are very small. She does have peg holes, granted, but there's absolutely no way to stand her unless you've already got a display stand to prop her up. At least I struggle getting her to stand on this fabric backdrop. The holster is a nice touch. I like how it uh, angles down as opposed to being a straight across belt strap. It's just got a, a secondary strap that wraps around the mid thigh area. Also included is her gold hand. Again, 
Got some sass going on there. Uh, the the head sculpt. Let's move the arms out of the way. Let's have a look at the head sculpt. Really cool. That um, kind of headband pulled back fro. I dig that. I dig that a lot. I also like that it's sh it's a shiny black plastic or black paint rather than being a matte colored black. I think that just suits the figure so much better. Face is quite pretty as well. Imperfections maybe a little bit. The eyes seem just a little bit off, but not enough to notice it unless you're really close to it. Like it seems like it's just a little messy on the one side there. She's got the same straps that carry over to the back of her as well. And that's maybe where you start seeing a little more of the imperfections of the paint. It's the little, uh, little bleeding in this section right here where the straps meet the rest of her torso. But I do it quite, quite like this figure. Again, I don't know anything about it. Don't know anything about Misty Knight. I don't follow the comics enough to follow her. In fact, Spot really doesn't read as much comics as he used to, and that's a real shame. That's what happens when you get older and you got all these responsibilities. I gotta really commit myself to making time to read more comics. In the way of her posability, though, let's just take the gun out of her hand for a second. Just put that down. In the way of Misty Knight's articulation or posability, her head is on a ball joint, hinges very nicely, and there's a good enough gap behind her hair and in front of her chin that it doesn't obstruct her head from moving up and down. Shoulders hinge out, there we go, as well as rotate all the way around. She has a bend in the elbow, which moves very easy versus the white tiger that we had to look at. I really struggled with her elbow. Swivel at the wrist, which also hinges at the hand. She has an upper torso uh, crunch or ball joint. And despite the fact that her legs uh, are really attached to by the belt and side um, strap here, it doesn't seem to obstruct her leg movement. Smart move that they kept this as a loose piece and this as a loose piece. That it gives just enough clearance that you can move the leg quite easily. She has a swivel point at the top of the thigh on both thighs a double hinge in the knee, as well as a hinge foot. Misty Knight, unfortunately, is only now the second figure that we've had to look at, but so far, my favorite. Obviously, that will be overshadowed by the figures that we'll be looking at coming up soon, but I gotta say, Misty Knight is a good example of, once again, just because you don't know the figure, or the character that the figure is based on, does not make for a poor figure. In fact, this figure really... I think saves my initial feelings what I had with White Tiger. Fine work, fine work. Today's Toy Spot we were continuing our looks at the Hasbro Marvel Legends Infinite Series Rhino Wave. We're looking today at Misty Knight. Stay tuned guys, Spot's going to have more Toy Spot 10 Year Way. Of course we're going to have a look at the other figures from the Rhino Wave. Those are be coming up to, to uh, coming up very soon, so stay tuned for those. Thanks for watching as you always do. I'll see you next time.